The year 2020 will go down in history, not for the unprecedented challenges we are facing, but for the strength, resilience, and compassion we are exhibiting to overcome them. While it is a difficult year, it certainly pushed the national government and us to rise above our duty and go beyond what is expected of us to be of service to our fellow Filipinos. Together with our country, we, the Philippine Coast Guard, have transformed amidst these challenging times and have demonstrated the spirit of saving lives. Towards the end of last year, we activated Task Force Tabang Mindanao when series of powerful earthquakes struck Mindanao. Through this task force, we were able to transport relief goods and assist rescue operations in a timely manner. Last January, Taal Volcano erupted which forced large-scale evacuations. We immediately activated Task Force Taal and deployed thousands of personnel to evacuate residents, rescue farm animals, provide medical assistance, and transport relief supplies. We've also ensured that civilians were protected from further threats within the danger zone. By the end of January, violence escalated in the Middle East. We deployed our very own BRP Gabriela Silang to aid in the possible repatriation of our fellow overseas Filipinos by standing by at the Malta port. In addition, with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in March, BRP Gabriela Silang was immediately directed to proceed home. Upon arrival, it conducted ferry missions for thousands of locally stranded individuals and cargoes. These cargoes contained personal protective equipment sets, medical supplies, medicines, and other resources that were crucial in our response to the COVID-19 pandemic in Visayas and Mindanao. As we continue our battle against an unseen enemy, our men and women, together with lead government agencies, remain steadfast in their service in the front line. To show our solidarity with the national government in fighting this pandemic, we created Task Force Laban COVID-19 in March, and we have dedicated 2,220 personnel and numerous assets to strictly enforce community quarantine measures nationwide. Eventually, Task Force Bayanihan was created to further enhance the provision of public service. Divided into six task groups, the Task Force Bayanihan was able to 1. Conduct RT-PCR tests to more than 1 million overseas Filipinos through one-stop shops at the Nino Aquino International Airport. 2. Collect swab samples of 295,405 individuals in quarantine hotels, mobile swabbing sites, and at the Palacio de Maynila Mega Swabbing Center. 3. Aid in the safe repatriation of approximately 19,000 Filipino seafarers. 4. Secure the safety of 1,742 overseas Filipino workers who served their mandatory isolation at the PR-15 and Philippine Arena Government Quarantine Facilities that we also manage. 5. Assist in the release of 127,000 repatriated overseas Filipinos who served their mandatory isolation in quarantine hotels while waiting for their swab test results. And 6. Transport more than 45,000 locally stranded individuals on board our floating and land assets. All of these were made possible with the full support of DOTR Secretary Arthur Tugade and the hired nurses and medical technologists who are courageously working in the fault line to flatten the curve with us. Aside from medical services, we have implemented 24-7 health protocols and security measures in various quarantine hotels, 
in Metro Manila and nearby provinces. While doing so, our men and women manage the operations of the Palacio de Manila Mega Swabbing Center and two government quarantine facilities in Port Area, Manila and in Bukawi, Bulacan. In our bid to help address the global need for a fresh crew of ships amid the COVID-19 pandemic, we work hand-in-hand -hand with our fellow maritime sector agencies and other concerned government organizations in the activation of crew change hubs in Luzon, specifically in Bataan, Subic, and Manila, soon to open in Cebu, Davao, and Batangas. With the hundreds of tireless PCG medical and security personnel, we have been able to smoothly and efficiently assist in the implementation of crew change operations for embarking and off-assigning seafarers. This is a significant development in our effort to make the Philippines the crew change hub capital in the world. We have also pitched in the Department of Transportation's Libreng Sakai program. With the use of our buses, we have augmented the need for transportation within Metro Manila. We have ferried 1,466 frontline workers and assisted 51 patients in need of private transport services. In addition to that, we have dispatched all our available floating and air assets, including our newest Airbus helicopter from Germany. To assist the Department of Health in the nationwide transport of medical resources to fight COVID-19. We have also aided the Department of Social Welfare and Development in preparing relief supplies for the most affected families. With the help of hundreds of PCG personnel, we were able to assist in the repacking and distribution of relief goods. We have also helped in the dispensation of financial aid under the Social Amelioration Program. Of course, we are not in this alone. We will not be able to fulfill these tasks without the help of the men and women of the PCG Auxiliary. Their food, provisions, and medical supplies for frontline personnel and our overseas Filipinos who are isolated at the Pier 15 quarantine facility have been of great help. The challenges we encountered this year have pushed our men and women to be present and to be ready to serve the public everywhere and anywhere. Some of us succumbed to the virus as more than 1,600 PCG frontline personnel contracted COVID-19, 22 of which are cases of reinfection. In spite of the unprecedented increase in the number of infected Coast Guardians, we did not waver in our commitment to do whatever it takes to serve the nation, even if it entails the ultimate sacrifice. We reiterate our oath to put public safety above all and above self. We made sure that we do not endanger the public and serve without proper health checks. We conducted regular swab testing for our personnel, provide them with vitamins, PPE sets, medical supplies, and nutritious meals to boost their immune system. We have also implemented strategic deployment with sufficient rest periods and work breaks. Moreover, we utilized ultraviolet lights to further disinfect their workstations and building areas. Over the weekend, we have finally inaugurated our very own quarantine facility. We can now manage our positive cases accordingly, allowing our infected personnel to recover and rehabilitate in soonest possible time so they can go back to their workstations. Rest assured that as our nation continues to fight the threat of COVID-19, we would continue to serve with humility and compassion. Every day, we will further increase our efforts and we will work harder in assisting lead government agencies in the promotion of public health and safety. Notwithstanding the challenges brought about by the pandemic, we have stayed true to our sworn duties. We have continued to further uphold our maritime jurisdiction through active patrol operations, ensure the safety of the maritime commerce, 
and protect the marine environment. This year, we participated in mutual undertakings with our neighboring countries to promote peace and orderliness in the West Philippine Sea. We also exerted effort to address the sea collision in Mamburao Occidental Minboro. We were able to resolve that in less than two months, a success that was made possible through the proactive efforts of our lawyers and public affairs officers who coordinated with the bereaved families until both parties came up with an acceptable resolution. Currently, we are monitoring updates on the criminal charges we filed against shipping companies behind the oil spill incident in Iloilo and the death of a local fisherman in Negros Occidental. This is part of PCG's commitment to bring to justice those who have been remiss in observing maritime safety regulations. Through the years, we have improved our capabilities through the acquisition of state-of-the-art equipment and facilities and through training programs that enhance the skills and abilities of our Coast Guard personnel. Aside from the addition of BRP Gabriela Silang and the commissioning of the second Airbus twin-engine rescue helicopter to our asset inventory, we are also preparing for the two units of 94-meter multi-role response vessel from Japan, slated to arrive in 2022. Recently, we have successfully procured four defiant fast patrol boats from the United States. 40 units of 12-meter fast patrol boats, 20 units of fast patrol craft with speed of up to 50 knots, 8 units of 50 caliber remote controlled weapon system and 13,622 maritime law enforcement firearms from Israel. We also have other significant infrastructure projects in the pipeline, such as the establishment of the PCG K9 Institute and Development Center in Clark, Pampanga, in partnership with the Philippine Ports Authority. The construction of the PCG and K9 hospitals in Taguig, the construction of the National Maritime Command Center and Integrated Coastal Central Command and Control Systems, and the setting up of 11 coastal radar systems in Mindanao and several Coast Guard bases across the country. We have also signified our intention to transfer the headquarters of the Philippine Coast Guard to Subic Bay. We are pleased to share that we have laid the groundwork for the procurement of the first ever PCG hospital ship that can be built through sovereign source, something that has not been done in the past. We want to express our sincerest thanks to Dr. Cora Claudio for paving the way into making this dream of ours a reality. We believe that the PCG hospital ship will be the best solution to swiftly respond to the ill effects of natural and man-made disasters, specifically in providing the medical needs of our people residing in far-flung communities. More than the facility upgrades, we believe that good governance in the PCG starts with its people. That is why to further enhance the Philippine Coast Guard procurement system, we started recruiting highly technical and competent procurement officers and auditors. With their assistance, we are able to properly manage existing resources and implement plans and programs in a manner that is compliant with national laws and regulations. We are also boosting our human resource competency through trainings. At present, a total of 18,500 personnel are deployed in various districts, stations, and substations nationwide. And they are all provided with appropriate education and training, if only to enhance their competencies vis-a-vis -vis the PCG mandates. With the implementation of the Service Command Career Pass or the Second Cap, we expect that our personnel will progressively harness specific skill sets that are relevant and valuable in their chosen career tracks. No more jack-of-all-trades mentality. 
because we want to cultivate a culture of competence and specialization in our workforce. We are into recruiting the right people for the right job. As we double the number of our existing manpower, targeting to reach 37,000 in 2025, SECOMCAP will ensure that we are not only strong in numbers, but also competent, credible, and professional. We are confident that with our human resource programs, we will be able to hone post guardians who are not only competent, but also compassionate public servants. Like probationary ensign Ralph Barahan, who is set to receive the 2020 International Maritime Organization Award for Exceptional Bravery at Sea. He successfully saved 61 lives on board a sinking passenger vessel in Cebu in November 2019. And candidate Coast Guard's woman Leia Dino, who exhibited honesty and integrity when she undoubtedly returned an envelope containing 135,000 pesos last month. Both of them possess and exhibit the core virtues of the Coast Guard service, humility and compassion. They have contributed to the transformation of the Philippine Coast Guard as a disciplined and well-respected uniformed service of the Republic of the Philippines. We believe that maintaining maritime safety, security, and peace in the Philippine maritime domain is a collective and coordinated effort of local and international partner agencies and private organizations. Hence, we will continue to keep our existing relations strong. We are also committed to form new partnerships so we can enhance the performance of our mandated functions. As part of this promise, we have recently entered into a Memorandum of Agreement with the Bureau of Customs for the joint operations of 20 customs-procured 12-meter patrol boats. This partnership will help us in the prevention of corruption, human trafficking, large-scale smuggling of illegal drugs, and other customs fraud that hurt the national economy. We are also honored and privileged that now more than ever, we are forming stronger bonds with the armed forces of the Philippines. The recent visit of the Commanding General of the Army, the Flag Officer in Command of the Navy, and other AFP Major Unit Commanders are all geared towards better collaboration and service to our countrymen. We have also welcomed our Maritime Agency Partners, the Philippine Ports Authority General Manager and the Maritime Industry Authority Administrator to strengthen our interoperability and cooperation in fortifying the Philippine maritime industry. In addition to that, we have strengthened our linkages with our foreign counterparts such as the United States, Australia, Japan, Sweden, and Taiwan. We are truly blessed for having so many partners working with us to protect our maritime nation. As we face another year of challenges in the light of the expanding demand for Coast Guard services, the PCG will stand firm to its commitment to be ready and responsive at all times. The PCG will continue to hold the line and rely on its gallant men and women to carry on as part of the whole nation approach of the government in fighting the pandemic and in fulfilling its mandate.